welcome to a new episode in our animated video series. Today we are going to discuss one of the most common ways pet owners deal with undesirable behavior in their animals, punishment. First, let's establish what punishment really means. In learning theory, there are two types of punishment, negative punishment and positive punishment. The use of the term negative and positive is not a judgment, but instead describe whether something is removed, negative, or added, positive, in the process. To make it clear, in positive punishment, something unpleasant is added following an unwanted behavior, and in negative punishment, something desirable is removed following the unwanted behavior. Both types of punishment make the behavior less likely to occur again. Eating a horse with a whip because he refused to jump a fence, or jerking on a dog leash because he pulled, are all examples of positive punishment. Positive punishments can also be non-physical, for example, shouting at an animal, frightening him when he's done something you don't like. Forcing a dog to go back inside the house because he's digging a hole in the garden, or taking the food bucket away from a horse because he's spinning his ear at the person, are all examples of negative punishment. Now that we are clear on what I mean by punishment in this video, I can start to explain why we shouldn't use it with our animals. Perhaps the biggest fallout of punishment is that it doesn't address the cause of the unwanted behavior, and as a result, it is often ineffective and unethical. Let's take an example of a dog who dig when let out in the garden. The dog is locked all day in the house with no stimulation while people are at work. When the people come back, they let him in the garden and the dog dig. The dog has fun digging until the owner notices and takes away his garden access. Because the dog has no longer access to the garden, he is no longer digging. But the actual problem, that is stress, excess energy and boredom, hasn't been addressed. As a result, it's only a matter of time until the dog starts performing destructive behaviors inside the house. Let's look up another example, involving a biting horse this time. The saddle doesn't fit the horse back and I've made him so. Horse bites the rider when the saddle is put on. The rider slaps the horse on the nose. The punishment doesn't fix the horse problem. It may, if lucky, just stop the horse from biting the rider when saddled. Because of this, other symptoms such as bucking on the saddle may appear. Another drawback of punishment is that it encourages avoidance rather than cooperation. An animal who has learned that a specific situation frequently leads to punishment will try to avoid the situation altogether or may only perform the unwanted behavior when the punisher is away. In the equestrian world, it is common to hear of people having difficulty to catch their horses. You will think they will take the hint, but unfortunately, many don't. Through the learning process known as classical conditioning, animals form association. They can learn to associate the punishment with the people that give them, with the item used to attribute them, or with places at which they occur. This leads the animal to exhibit even more unwanted behaviors. For example, a horse who has learned that he gets punished in the riding arena may refuse to enter it willingly or may flee from his rider when he is able to. Punishment increases risk of aggression in animals, and therefore is a massive safety hazard. In a 2009 study on dogs, it was found that the more severe the punishment, the more likely the dogs were to react aggressively, with 43% of dogs who were hit or kicked reacting aggressively. Animals who are routinely exposed to punishment are at risk of developing chronic stress. The elevated level of cortisol in these animals compromise their immune system, making them more prone to disease and making recovery a longer process. Chronic stress is very much overlooked in the equestrian world, as anxiety is too often attributed to personality or breed. And finally, the most important argument against punishment is that we got more appropriate, human and effective technique available to deal with our animals' unwanted behavior. From antecedent arrangement to the use of systematic desensitization and counter-conditioning and more, so why cause emotional distress or physical discomfort if we don't have to? Punishment should be reserved to emergency situations 
where everything else fell, when it's the only way to keep everyone safe. We shouldn't use in training in everyday life what we may do as a last resort. Yet punishments are everywhere and used for nearly everything. Your horse doesn't deserve to be hit with a whip because he refused the jump or kick because he didn't counter the exact minute you ask him to. Long are gone the day we needed animals to perform so we could feed our families. Now we use them for companionship and entertainment. Punishing someone for fun's sake is simply unacceptable. It's not because a lot of people still do it that we have to follow their example. We have the time to train our animal with human, science-based training methods that don't involve any coercion or emotional or physical violence. You can get results without having to expend unnecessary amount of energy, stressing yourself out and getting angry or frustrated. I hope this video has inspired you to reevaluate your training and handling technique. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. If you would like to help us making more content like this, check out our Patreon link in the description below. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.